Just over the weekend, Metro Manila experienced its coldest weather so far this year at 15.8 degrees Celsius. With the chilly weather being felt in the metro and the rest of the country, the public is advised to be wary of cold weather-related illnesses. To talk more about this, we have in the studio Dr. Ange De Leon. Good morning, Dr. De Leon, and welcome to Daybreak. Good morning. Now, Dr. De Leon, the cold weather is said to persist until next month. So what are these illnesses that uh, will make us more susceptible to these because of the cold weather? Well, the usual illness that, that's available right now are upper respiratory tract infection, like cough and colds, and then sometimes there's fever. Pneumonia is very common. It's a lot of admissions right now are because of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And we also have cases of asthma, around we also have what we call ab abdominal flu abdominal it's just like a flu-like illness wherein there's fever cough and cold sometimes but it presents as gastroenteritis vomiting diarrhea abdominal pain this is caused by a virus ma'am yes yes mm -hmm. well the most common cause of um uh, abdominal flu right now for children is rotavirus but for adult there is such a thing as um, norovirus that also causes the disease. Mm. So why why is it why is this so during a cold weather season? Viruses thrive more in cold weather; they linger longer. Right. It's oh. very seasonal. That's the usual thing that happens. Mm -hmm. These are seasonal illnesses that happens during the cold weather, um, maybe because it's more of the clustering clustering wherein people gather around a certain place at a longer time and at the same time if it's because um, it's very congested, um, the ventilation is not very good, that's why these illnesses are very dominant. Mm -hmm. All these respiratory illnesses. Mm -hmm. Now, right. how can we, uh, what are the symptoms that we should watch out for? I mean, when do we need to go to the doctor or at least go just get an over-the-counter prescription? Right. Well, the usual is that they have the common colds. So mm -hmm. it's watery nasal discharge along with cough. It can be dry cough or productive, meaning there's phlegm that comes with it. And at the same time, there's fever. Well, we usually advise our patients to watch out when there is um, persistent fever, two, three days of fever, and then the, the, the person is not able to eat already. At the same time, the coughing becomes more prominent. The child or the, the patient becomes more disabled. Then we advise them to see their doctors mm -hmm. at the soonest time possible. Mm -hmm. And over-the-counter pres prescription, well, the usual thing that we, we tell our patients is to just increase the oral fluid intake. Because it, it, it's usually a viral infection that abounds. But of course, sometimes these viral illnesses super infects with a bacterial infection. And this is the time that we give already antibiotics in these patients. Mm -hmm. How can these be avoided acquiring these diseases? Okay. Well, of course, the important thing is bed rest. Mm -hmm. Eight to ten hours of sleep for children. For adults, it's six to eight hours of sleep. is usually enough to sustain the immune system. Mm -hmm. At the same time, with um, lots of fluids, they have to drink eight to 10 glasses of water in a day. Sometimes I even tell my patients, drink one to two liters in a day. Mm. Yes, and then of course, they have to have good exercises, three times a week of good exercise. And of course, the cough reflex is very important, meaning they have, when they cough, they should cover their mouth because you see people left and right coughing <laughs> and then they That's spit true. out the phlegm in fright, <laughs> left and right. So it's better uh -huh. to just cover their, their, their mouth with, with their hands and just mm -hmm. cough on it. Mm -hmm. And then they can just wash their hands properly. Mm -hmm. um, they, they sing, right? When, when they advise, they have to sing the happy birthday yeah. song. Three times, right? Yeah, yeah so, so yeah, you sure. say that, yes. <laughs> with soap and water to say that your hands will be very clean. I remember um, President Obama used to say you cough by yes, doing this. That's how right? I um, that's how my children that's how Is I that? teach my children how yes. to cough and in school they're taught to they cough go like this. on their sleeve. Yes. Um, because you know, because let's say they're in the classroom and right. you cough in your mouth and mm -hmm. you can't you know you, right. you, you, you have to go back to your school activities yeah. and mm -hmm. um, this disrupt going to the bathroom would be disrupting the, the class. So you prevent the spread of yeah. all these illnesses. Yeah. But That's what about alcohol gel? Is that, um, is that a good option? Because a lot of people carry alcohol gel, mm -hmm. but some say, of course, it's better to wash your hands. Right. But some are saying if you wash your hands too often, you can actually um, 
you have the possibility that you may get infection because of too much washing. Right, because the because the the skin becomes disrupted, and mm -hmm. then bacteria can enter the skin. It can mm -hmm. penetrate. But of course, like what you said, alcohol gel is another option. If you do not uh, have any water available, then you can use alcohol gel. And what you mentioned a while back, like coughing on the sleeve is right. Because of course, when you cough, you mm -hmm. spit out a little phlegm. Sometimes there's, um, most of the, the respiratory tract infection are, are um, acquired mm -hmm. via inhalation. So there's droplets that, that mm -hmm. abounds. That's why it's better to cough on the, on the sleeves. That's very good because children don't wash their hands normally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The That's parents true. has to tell the child to, help, to wash their hands, right? right? Now, what if somebody actually coughed on your face? I mean, whether <laughs> deliberately or not. You yeah, have happens. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, your when son, my, right? When my kids are sick, they just cough on now, my what, face. What can like, we... That's it. I'm infected. <laughs> So what can we do? You, you know what? When somebody coughs in front of you, yeah. you don't inhale. Oh, okay. You should hold your breath. Okay. You hold your breath and exhale. That's what I do when my children coughs. <laughs> and even my parents, the, uh -huh. the, the parents of my, my, my patients, I tell them, you don't inhale when they cough in front of you. You try to hold your breath and you exhale first before mm. inhaling. Oh, That's okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so now we know. You know, we were yeah. going to ask you as well. Now, which is more um, hazardous, the change in weather pattern somebody coughing at you or every morning as you go to work non-smokers get exposed to smoke you know it's um, double-sided mm -hmm. in the sense that right now in the Philippines we have pollution is mm -hmm. all around mm -hmm. air pollution we are very urbanized mm -hmm. industrialization is very much mm -hmm. um, ahead of us so the congestion pollution and the cigarette smoke. and the cigarette smoking adds up to acquiring any any respiratory illness. That's why in urban centers like Manila, Metro Manila, there are a lot of children or or men who has cough and colds who acquire asthma as as, as days go by. Mm -hmm. So that's it's the same thing. So what we will do, we won't smoke. Oh, we will just exhale first. Right. I mean, yeah. that's the best thing that we right. can do right. now. Right. Run away mm -hmm. from the smokers. Run away. <laughs> right. Also, uh -huh. doctor, I was wondering. Um, um, what about measles cases and dengue, mm -hmm. the possibility of uh, acquiring dengue with, mm -hmm. with now in the cold season? Right now. Right now, measles is more common than dengue fever. Okay. But dengue right now, before, it was more common during summertime, latter part of mm -hmm. the year, middle mm -hmm. part of the year. But now it, it comes almost any time of the year. It's very sporadic. Mm -hmm. Measles, on the other hand, is more common during the cold season. So that's November, December, January and also during summer months. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's because of the clustering of the people. Measles get um, the child or the persons acquire um, measles um, disease through inhalation. So when people cluster, the tendency for their circulation not to be good is there. So they get the illness, the disease at once. Well, before we let you go, ma'am, we understand that you have a seminar. Can you tell us more about this? And maybe you'd like to invite our audience to attend right. the seminar. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We will be having a um, Lung Center of the Philippines postgraduate course on the 29th to 31st. So that will be on Wednesday and Thursday at the Lung Center of the Philippines. It's entitled Catching the Breath of Life. And on the 31st, we will be having a ventilator workshop so they can just drop by Long Center of the Philippines Auditorium when um, whoever would like to attend. Okay, so this is open to the general public. Yeah, yes. Well, is there a um, last message you'd like to tell us to keep us uh, healthier during this time? Right. Well, I guess the important thing is for us to have a good understanding of what the, their illnesses are. So if they have cough and colds, they shouldn't panic at once. They just have to drink a lot of fluids, drink lots of vitamin C, and then of course bed rest and let themselves become stress-free. Mm. And later on, when the, it persists, when the cough persists for more than two weeks, usually it becomes bacterial. That's a time that they have to consult their doctor or any time if they feel there's already fever, that the person is not um, eating well, not drinking a lot, and it's already disabling for the person, then they have to consult their doctor. Okay. Dr. Angela Leon, thank you so much for joining thank us this you. morning. Thank you for the invitation.